All right, here's a video to talk about connectors. Um, I'm a big fan of Anderson power poles myself, which are these guys right here. Um, they come in all sorts of different colors. You get the plastic housings and the metal pins. Now you can either get the 30 amp or the 40 amp connectors, or 45 amp I guess. Um, I normally pick by wire size. If you have a bigger gauge, you want to go with the bigger ones. Um, just to go through a couple of the different ones out there though, uh, these are typical XLR connectors. You'll find these on microphones, uh, in audio, like in uh, concerts and stuff. Um, often used for charge ports. You'll see this on your battery side and this will go to your charger and they just fit in there. Now, sometimes I get to work on people's batteries and all my chargers have Anderson power poles so I've made adapters where I've got Andersons on one side that match up to my colors. Um, there's also the old trailer hitch connectors found these on Wilderness Energy kits, um, various eBay motor, hub motors will have these as well. Um, they work, I'm not a big fan of them, they come loose if they vibrate a little bit and they easily get corroded. I replace these as soon as I get them. Um, these are on Crystallite hall sensors, it's a mini XLR, you'll find this on the motor side. Um, Cyclone uses this type, it's pretty sturdy, it's not too bad. Uh, these are also Cyclone and other brands. They fit pretty good. Um, I vaporized a few because the pins will move around a little bit in there. You can see they move and they're prone to shorting out. I really don't like these. I throw them out and use Andersons for everything. Um, about Andersons, a lot of people have a hard time getting them to fit properly or how to crimp the pins. So I figured I'd make a small video and show you how I do it. Now I've got the expensive $35 uh, tri crimp makes life real easy. You just put your pin in and click, you're done. I'll show you that in a minute. But I also have the $10 really cheap Gardner Bender variety uh, crimper, so we'll get to that in a moment. Alright, so starting with a really cheap vise, um, $10 variety, find these at any UAP Napa Canadian Tire. Uh, most auto stores will have this Gardner Bender brand uh, vise. Now you can crimp Anderson power poles using this if you don't want to spring for the expensive tool. And uh, it's all in how you put the pin in the vise that makes this work or not work. So what you want to do is you'll notice your vise has two sides. There's the side with the uh, half moon whatnot, and the other side with the lump in it. Um, different instructions on the internet will show you how to do it. The way I do mine is I'll put the male side of the vise on the edge with the spoon facing down. There's a seam on the top and I want to line up the seam with the middle of that lump. If it's off to one side, one leg or one side of the connector will push down while the other stays up. And you'll have to go back and forth and mess with it. Uh, so if you put them in just right and then grab your wire and stick that in there. I've got a strand sticking out but it won't matter for the example. Um, first thing you do is you crimp that down nice and tight. And you'll see how both my legs folded together. Not sure if you can see that, but now the next thing you want to do is fold this in, and I do that by putting them all the way down to the bottom of my vise, and give them another good squeeze, and then it's pretty much good to go. Um, there's a bit of a lump underneath, so I'm going to squish it again. Put them in here like that. And one last little squeeze, and then this should pretty much snap right in. Um, if you look at your contact, there's the metal tab on the bottom. Spoon goes in there. You can only get it in one way. You'll see how it kind of shows up on the inside. If I push that in there, your nice good click, and she's in there. I mean, it doesn't come out. You can pull all you want. That thing's in there for good. Now, with um, bigger gauge wire like 10 gauge and the 45 amp connectors. I'll do this one with the spin. Uh, you want to put the pin in there first and the vise is labeled 45, 30, and 15. So I'm going to put my pin in the 45 amp section and then put my wire in its place and it's as simple as that. Click. Done. Then you got a connector on there. Um, guy on, same thing, click, don't come out, and the 30s will fit on the 45s, no problem. Now the cool thing with these is that if you're riding, 
and you hook a wire, these things will safely come apart without yanking the wires out of your battery or out of your controller, but they won't, and it won't come out. Well, I made a liar out of myself there, but anyway, you get the idea. They click in good. Um, when you got really thin wire like this, you'll find that they're too loose in the barrel. They tend to want to slip out, so if you strip double the length, see how I took away more than I had to? I'm just going to bend this guy over like that, and then put my connector on it. Voila. And then fit that in my tool, and squeeze, and there it is, one crimp pin. And that's as simple as that. Alright, so now, um, taking Andersons apart, you can buy the expensive tool again, or the, you know, the five dollar whatnot, but a, a small jeweler screwdriver will do just fine. Um, in your connector, you'll see how the metal pin is right on the edge. If you put your screwdriver right into the bottom, and you can just lift up by holding your wire here in your connector, you can pop that right out. Simple as that. Um, if you've got stringy wire like this for example and you're trying to push that into the connector it's so soft that you're going to mangle the wire trying to get it in so you can use a screwdriver to make the job easier you just leave them on their face and with your screwdriver again simply get to the side of the contact and you can push them right in uh, so you're pushing on the metal contact just like on the edge right here and you're just wedging that into the contact, simple as that. Um, whenever you're doing a bunch of these that are going to be side by side, well, here's a fine example, um, see how two are facing down and one's facing up? You want to avoid that, just think of it ahead when you splice your wires, let's say you have a series of wires side by side, all the same length, that you're going to put all your spoons down or all your spoons up, and on your matching end, uh, same thing, like just think of it in advance before you crimp them in, then you have to twist the wires all around. Makes for a less than professional job. Um, but that's pretty much it on Andersons. They're great, last forever. Um, the wiping action, whenever they click together, will clear away the carbon. Because when you connect the controller, for example, it'll spark when you initially plug it in. And that'll create a bit of oxide on the tips. But because of these sliding action type things, it's going to wipe that off every time you put them in and out. And I've had these for years, and they're fine. Um, I've replaced them after probably two or three hundred connections, and didn't really even need to. Um, only one case where a 10 gauge wire melted on me, but I was using it at 100 amps, so it's not the connector's fault, it's just that things were getting too hot. Short of that, they are great. Alright, now finally, um, last thing to mention about Andersons is you'll notice the edges are dovetailed. You get a female and a male side. So you can connect these by simply sliding them together like so. Now you can make different arrangements if you want to have a combination that can't be plugged in the wrong way. Um, you could do something like this. So you can have one for your charger, one for your controller, whatnot. If you only had so many colors and want to make sure you don't put the wrong connector in the wrong spot. Um, and you'll notice when you slide them together there's a tiny little pinhole between the connectors and you can use the they call them roll pins it's just a little metal pin that slides in there uh, You just push them into the connector and uh, it'll prevent things from sliding apart I typically don't even put them in, I never have a problem with them coming apart but you can if you want to um, even if you don't have the roll pins you can use just a normal piece of wire and you can stick it in there you could cut both sides and put a roll of tape or you could put a toothpick in there if you wanted to, whatever, anything at all that will prevent these from sliding apart. Um, some of them are, are harder to put apart than others. Uh, these are pretty loose fitting because I've used them a number of times. But um, yeah, that's it.